What's good guys, Jake here. Today with this Q&A that I promised you last on my Instagram. So if you want to check that out, that is Jake Gordon Fitness and I post every day. So just give me some likes, give me a follow and I'll try and get back to you guys as quick as I can. So question one comes from Devon Dave Does Fitness. Mouthful, but fuck. <laughs> What's a good pre-workout meal? I don't take any pre-workout supplements. All right, so your aim for a pre-workout meal is something that's high carb, not simple carb, complex carbs. So you're looking at something like oats, uh, maybe like a cereal of some kind. Uh, Wheat Bix is always a good one. Uh, if you wanna keep it really plain and something that's not heavy on the stomach, but I always personally go for oats. Um, I do take pre-workout, so that is my side of things because I'm at work all day and uh, just before I get in the gym, have a quick down of the pre-workout and just smash the gym. But like I said, have wheat bix or oats, something like that. And then when you're in the gym, as an intra workout, have some sweets or something sugary just to give you that little bit of energy boost to keep you going all the way through. So thanks for that question. Hopefully that answered it. Next question comes from Jim. Uh, <laughs> Co Jim, check him out, guys. Um, I'll leave a. Uh, not a link, uh, annotation here to find his page. Uh, he's strong as man, literally, he's lost so much weight in the last like three, four years, and he's put some good size on. So, like I said, I'll put it in the description below and obviously on screen right here. So, his question is What is more important on a back squat? Is it depth or weight? Right, so here it depends. If you're doing a back squat for your hamstrings and glutes, then you're only gonna go real deep, hold at the bottom maybe, keep the contraction on the glutes and the hamstrings, and then just power up. Also, this benefits flexibility as well. Obviously going deeper, letting it stretch out, pausing at the bottom helps stretch your hips out. And what you wanna do is push your knees out whilst you're down at the bottom of the squat. But if you're working on quads, you're only gonna be going just a parallel and then pushing straight back up. But I'm going off the question here completely. Depth or weight, you really wanna work on the depth and then increase the weight over time, which goes with good form. So if you look at my Instagram, like I said before, I'll link it here. Um, with my squat, I always like to go deep, pause and up again. This is the best way to reduce the chance of injury, but also to increase strength in your deeper squat. Um, for me, when I do quads, I'm gonna be doing a front squat. Again, on my Instagram, I do go really low. It's just a thing that I have. I can't stop at parallel. I just love to go deep. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I love to go deep on my squats, but I will do a box squat, which really helps me just stop at parallel and come back up again on the front squat. What people don't like about the front squat is the bar is literally gonna be choking you right here and you really wanna hold it up. But if you have the flexibility, you really wanna try and get the bar resting on your fingertips and bring your elbows all the way up, just hold it up there. I don't have the flexibility for that. So I'm just holding it at the front. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. Form overweight for squat. Stops injuries, helps you gain strength, and that's what we want. So, next question that comes from, just find it here. Are deadlifts really necessary if you're just after aesthetics? Now, I would say the main components of lifting comes from bench, deadlift, and squat. These are the main three that you're gonna to wanna to do to build that foundation, build that strength. I know this is, I know this is really far out example, but Mike O'Hearn, as you can see, he has like a solid base with his squat, deadlift, and bench. I know he's not natural, um, or I can't accuse him of not being natural, but I'm just saying, to me, his basics of working off the bench, squat, and deadlift, even like powerlifters, all strength training, um, all that sort of stuff is all based off those three. But back to your question about deadlifts, Aesthetics, you really wanna like, don't focus on aesthetics, focus on building up your muscle, building it in symmetry, getting your strength, getting your tendons, your ligaments, all working together so you can reduce injury. And then after you've been training for a long period of time, maybe focus on trimming up 
and getting in that aesthetic look, but you really want to focus on building the muscle and strength first. Do not worry about aesthetics and that. Literally focus on your training and building yourself. I know a lot of people want to be looking amazing, looking incredible, but that comes after time. I've been training for five and a half years now. It didn't all come overnight. And wait, let me read what you said before. So you said I'm aesthetic, you want to look like me. It's taken me so long, like I, it doesn't come from just going to the gym and smashing out specific exercises. Deadlifts are really good for developing your back. If you want a really good back, some, some glutes as well and working on those hamstrings, do deadlifts. It's gonna make your back thick. It won't make it wide, it'll just make it thick. The width comes from obviously lat pull down and different exercises. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. I know I rambled on that. Basically focus on your strength and size before the aesthetics. You can trim down and diet afterwards, which is easy. The dieting is the easy bit. The training and building size is the hard bit. So focus on that first, I promise you. And that was from I'm Myron Bro. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave your name out. And here is the final question. How have you developed such a thick chest? So, I've had this question quite a lot. For me, it's like genetics. My dad has the built out chest, um, so that has come from that side of things, but also it's come through training over time. So what you wanna do is just, if you're a beginner, start low weight, just work on the reps, work on the form, going all the way down, touching your chest, pushing all the way up, contracting all the way. Don't lock out the arms, just, sque just squeezing all the way through the chest. I'll link a um, video in the description or like an annotation up here or something about benching form. You really wanna work on that. The best way to develop muscle is to develop it with the full range of motion. I see videos of people online where they're doing shoulder press coming all the way down, they're stopping here. Like, the shoulder's not even stretching. Coming, look, watch that stretch. That's the stretch there. Hold me. The stretch there. Stretch, squeeze, stretch. You don't want to do this sort of like short range of motion, bam, bam, bam. You're not going to stretch your muscle out. You're not going to develop the full range of the muscle. You're literally shortening the head. And that's not going to work. So, what you want to do, like I said, with bench, all the way down, squeeze all the way through and all the way up. And if you're going to work on the rep, all that, all that, as you get stronger, or as you mature into your bodybuilding or whatever you're doing, weightlifting, you're just doing it as a hobby, then add the weight, then play around with it, then do five sets of five, 10 sets of three, stuff like that. But from the beginning, that's how I developed it. <clears throat> just doing sets on sets on sets and then changing the weight. It used to be, we used to have like a little competition at school, like who hit the 100 club first, but that was just, just a bit of banter. But then as obviously, the ego side of it takes over. I did get an injury in the side of my chest just here. I got like a minor tear just under there. I do feel it a little bit nowadays. It's so much better than it used to be. But I'm emphasizing it guys, seriously. The strength and the size comes in time. It all takes time. Natural bodybuilding takes time. You can't expect it overnight. These guys that you see in the magazines, on videos and stuff, and they're huge, they're jacked, they're shredded all, all year round. They're taking stuff guys to get there. Trust me. But if you're thinking about taking stuff, just wait. Just get that solid foundation first. Wait until you've been in the game six, seven, eight years. Even wait until you're an adult, like a proper mature adult. And then you know that you've got no more growing to do. Your bones are fully grown. You're not going to get any taller. You're not, your shoulders aren't going to get any wider. Like bone-wise, I mean like that. I don't mean mus muscularity-wise. So basically just build off that, guys. Take it slow. It's a slow game any size, all muscle comes from taking time. You want to build quality muscle, you don't want to rush the building of yourself. Anyway, I'm rambling again. I hope that has answered your questions. So like I said, the squat, form, building a big chest, form over weight first, but then pushing the weight on. That is what's going to get you that big chest. Aesthetics, just wait for it to come. Just build yourself, then diet down. And finally, the last question, I can't remember off the top of my head, deadlifts. Literally, do deadlifts, it will build you a solid foundation, but with good form. I'll make a video on deadlift form in time, 
But as always, guys, stay safe in the gym, and I'll see you next time.